Yeah, I think it's a, it's a good point. I'm glad you raised it. I uh, actually spend more of my time the last few years in Europe because we act, we have more operations in Europe, and Europe is a little bit further down the path in the activities that uh, I participate in, which is recycling uh, plastics waste specifically and other resources now from uh, all kinds of waste streams. And Europe has been wrestling with this longer than the U.S., I think. And, in fact, right now, the head of the uh, environment, uh, Mr. Potechnik, who I've met with directly, face to face, is has issued some papers and some, you know, sort of policy statements from his office. He would be the equivalent of our head of the U.S. EPA, uh, saying that he believes that uh, incineration has been and waste energy even has been overbuilt and oversold in Europe, and that it's stealing resources. Uh, resources are being uh, converted to energy plants that should be recovered. And I think that's an interesting stance for the, the, the minister to take. And he's trying to push for an increase in recycling and a reduction in incineration or waste energy. And the, the, the tension, of course, is when you build a big waste energy plant, these are large investments, just like a large recycling plant is a large investment, and you need to feed it in order to recover your investment and get a return on your investment. So to feed it, uh, you start attracting resources maybe further than uh, was initially intended, and you see Sweden, for example, importing uh, materials uh, to feed uh, their waste to energy because their recycling rates are so high. Hmm. So there's a there's a natural tension again. It's uh, I think it's in the long run it's probably healthy, but in short run you're going to have competition for those what you if you will resources, and there'll be a I think uh, hopefully uh, a logical and holistic uh, approach to figuring out which is the best uh, conversion technology uh, to maximize the value of our resources. Yes, I said, I think it, uh, in, in, in a large part uh, it's due to personal financial uh, stakes, objectives. Uh, of course, there are many people that are truly uh, into some of these, these uh, technologies. So we're concentrating on technology. We'll, will follow this path. This is a parenthesis, but uh, I think that uh, in, in many, many cases now, uh, after a hundred years of working on this, I, uh, I think that the technological aspect is the easiest part to solve, particularly in developing countries. And as you probably are learning now with the mayors in those places in the Philippines, uh, political, social, environmental issues are the most, some of the most difficult pieces of this, of this part to solve, and and when you have people that are, are selling a selling in quotes a particular technology, uh, then the, the it, then you have the possibility of uh, running into severe objections. Of course, the contractual aspects and all of that in the United States, and, and I don't know what minister there there isn't a minister in Europe for the whole of Europe. Perhaps you're talking about. Uh, the director of the uh, EU EPA, Mike. Uh, no, he's the he's called the uh, commissioner for the environment. Commissioner, he's, okay. He's commissioner the head of the environment, the whole yeah. EU. But there is, there is there there aren't ministers in the EU as yet. Uh, but the 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 point is that if you, you have different solutions for different areas, uh, if we talk about the Nordic countries, and I, I think that. We have to remember that they use waste to energy or energy to to heat to heat their 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 buildings. It's a source of fuel, and and they don't take that temperature up in incinerators up to generate electricity, which is more difficult. So there are a whole lot of a different aspects to consider when when you say look at such and such a place, and then we should be doing the same as well. So that also is a part of this. Or the difficulty in trying to understand uh, uh, what the solution should be for a particular area. So that's where the, the frictions come in. And I have had the, uh, I guess, the pleasure of having seen uh, recycling uh, grow in, 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 in the San Francisco Bay Area since the 1970s when there wasn't anything. And uh, I, I, some of my colleagues would catalog me as the Green Panther when. When I was proposing to 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 do some things towards recycling, so uh, you know it, it, it's difficult to uh, to to find solutions that are um, common to everybody. 
Um, in, in the U.S., it's just a different animal. Outside the U.S., um, you run into two main issues. One that you alluded to was there's definitely resistance to newer technologies. And I think part of that is because a lot of them are considered to be paper technologies, where you have a company who comes around and they're touting some new technology that doesn't even have a demo model built yet. And if they can just get a contract for the waste, then they can go back and try to raise the money to develop the actual technology. And I think, as you alluded to, a lot of these municipalities have been burned, um, and that makes it very difficult to be accepted coming in the door next. The yeah. other issue we have uh, uh, outside the U.S. more so than in the U.S. is, um, I guess you could call it the politics involved. Uh, it seems that a lot of the countries we go to, uh, the mayor's uncle's brother's sister's dog needs to be able to drive a dump truck and get show up once a month and get paid in a brown paper bag. And um, that makes life a little bit difficult, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, here, it's much easier. We just call it campaign financing. <laughs> <laughs>